Let me give a little bit of background and motivation for this seminar. Uh, as you may know, uh, as of this year, we are starting a new undergraduate degree program in the university, data science and analytics. So one motivation and the main motivation has been this. And the first, of the first speaker of the for Urbe, I don't know if you learned this, was Jem Mansur, the <laughs> music artist, who, who told us about the relation between data and music with historic perspective. So this was uh, a very nice talk, and today another nice talk is expecting us. Uh, and just a little information about the program is you may be aware the university is very keen on interdisciplinary approach, both in research and education, and this new program is also designed in a similar spirit, and the speakers are also reflecting this, as you see. So we had a speaker from you know, an art, uh, and now we have a speaker from industry and a very relevant sector. So just a brief inter information about uh, Uğur Bey, Uğur Candan. So he's the managing director of SAP Turkey. Plus, he's been one of the founders of SAP Turkey in the early 2000s, I right? I was lucky enough to be there. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call so the this is 2001, as I know. So uh, when SAP Turkey was being established, so he's been with the company for quite some time. Uh, he has a bachelor's degree from Boğaziçi University and master's from Nottingham University. Uh, and today, he will, his official title is Restless Change of Enterprise Applications Market, Market the Impact of AI. So we're eager to hear. Thanks for accepting our invitation. Thank you. It's an honor being here. as a SAP consultant. So, yes, I'm the managing director, but uh, 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 this, this is, um, to be honest, this is not a role that we should be proud of because I lost connection to the customers, to be honest, uh, until the last five years. I, I am deeply connected to all those industries. Uh, I will name some of those customer cases. Uh, and I've been operating as an engineer in the field. Uh, just some numbers and facts and figures uh, what SAP does, and then uh, I will uh, switch the microphone to you to collect some questions, because it is imperative that I answer your questions. And we want to discuss, uh, as a rule of thumb, the impact of AI, because that's the 
That is the game changer since my childhood. I do see uh, internet mobility. But there are so many other game changers that, that we can mention, like social media, Bitcoin, you name, you name it. But out of all those ones, I think connected, being connected to web was something, uh, a breakthrough that I made my uh, nerves shake when I first got onto a PC, or it was not even a PC, it was a terminal screen, that I could type something on, and the guy next to the planet, on the other side of the planet Earth, were able to read it real time. Uh, it was not even uh, ICQ back then, it was a terminal screen, uh, typical IRC request that is going to be reflected on the other side of the planet. That made me shiver, and then came along to web browsers. And then it was the mobile device that may change our world. Now it is more important than our purse when we go out of the home. You can even uh, wouldn't care less if you forget your car keys, but we never go out with them. And then now it is the AI. I think this is the third way that, that predominantly will change everything that we see around us. The discussion that I want to fire on is all about actually you being present in the future, because the, the, uh, for the audience, they might not see the population's age, but we are, we are, we, 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 uh, there's a young group of people, uh, forget about us on the other side of the equation, over 50 years old, but you would be executing in a world that is completely different once you are 20 or 25 years of seasoned leaders in your companies, in your territories, in your function areas, what, what should be the one, what should you expect and what can you get prepared to do? I will give it as an example of SAP. SAP is a 50-year-old company doing nothing but solving business problems since day one. We had not been founded like a shoe company and then transformed into an IT company. No. Four guys established a company. They had a, I would call, uh, a constitution saying that whatever we do should be real time. That was 1972. That should be integrated, and we should nail it down into the product so well that nobody could dare changing that constitution law after 50 years. That is why, until we came up with some marketing uh, terminology as IT companies. SAP R dot slash three, three tier architecture. It was not a three tier architecture. It was resembling something future, future looking, and then we dropped that tree. But everybody thought it was a version number. No, it was the, one of those items that represented uh, slicing data application and the um, front end logic into three pillars. I'm talking about 1972. That might look obvious today, but no other IT company even had a vision like this. And real time, when we when the company was established, I wouldn't name the brand, but you would know as the most well-known brand back then in the infrastructure, told our engineers that there is no such compute power on planet Earth to run a company financials, logistics, human resources into one single instance integrated. There was no such compute power. They are daydreaming. They established a camp company that would fail radically was the comment they put on the table. Because their customers were asking for infrastructure and the software that SAP was coding back then was not able to scale on those infrastructure components because they were designing something for the future. Once again, dear colleagues, dear friends, you need to design your life because that life would not be able to be executed now, but it would be able to be executed in the future. This is what they did in 1972. This is a rare example, and the DNA of the company comes from this first level engineering. Second, we always executed in the field. No single code of SAP components had been written in the laboratory. Yes, we do have labs. Yes, we do have 17 labs. Yes, out of 120 
uh, headcount that we have, one third is developers. Uh, yes, the internal development is just a minuscule piece of worldwide millions of developers out there developing on our platform. We are the far ahead largest development framework used by industry. It is not even AWS, it is not even Microsoft. They are just catching up the way with the cloud and we want to outsource them some stuff. I will mention them also. But long story short, Industry knowledge of this company had been predominantly coming from the reason that we were automate, we were fighting the business challenges of the decade. Every decade the challenge was changing. Now I think every two years, three years it is changing, by the way. But back then, every decade there was another, uh, either everybody was trying to grow, either everybody was trying to protect p either everybody was trying to protect headcount, either everybody was trying to protect IP rights. The five name of the game was different on planet Earth due to the time, due to where you live on this planet. But long story short, 50 years doing the same thing. And at the end of the game, uh, by the way, it is so engineering that uh, they were discussing what should be put as a name to our company. You know what they did? Uh, what we are, we are going to do, we are going to do <coughs> applications over systems and that will solve problems. So systems, applications, and product. Yes, that's what we are going to do. SAP, system, application, product. That's in German, but English is the same thing. It was so obvious what they wanted to do, and ever since we are doing the same thing. Now, why, where are we now? Where are we now? Uh, first of all, the new operating system of this planet. We don't have life around beyond this planet at this moment in time, as we know, maybe that is. But currently in this planet, currently, back then it was the operating system, database management system. We, again, in our constitution says we should be coding things that is not locked to neither operating system nor a database vendor. So that's why we were known to be an application vendor. And that was the segment I would argue as a big creator. We are an application vendor. We don't want to do database. We don't want to do systems. We don't want to do hardware. Still, SAP does not own a single piece of hardware manufacturing on this planet. And we just want to do applications over the operating system and database layers. Is now back to cloud again. It is the hyperscalers. Now those hyperscalers, uh, you call it Azure, you call it AWS Cloud, you call it GCP, Google Cloud, Platform, you, you call it Alibaba. Those are the new operating systems of this planet. So it, it is, of course, the capacity is beyond what we used to call operating systems. But it, it is a set of tools available to everybody on a subscription basis. Subscription basis means tomorrow morning, Everybody has access to the same thing. This is the game changer of the AI. I hope we will not remove it. You never know, maybe we will unplug this game at some point. Uh, I had the luxury of downloading the kernel of, uh, back then it was an open source component, uh, chat GPT loaded onto an infrastructure rented on the other side of the planet. Give it a try myself, my own self. As of today, a very few brands. You can still do it, but not with ChatGPT for sure. But you can still trial and error is for scale now. When I was at your age, going to, even I was a freshman or sophomore, you call it, when I was in university, we were, I will be very open, we were stealing books from not the library of OSG, from the People using systems, or the systems manuals were so precious that we had to somehow sneak through the operating uh, IT rooms of those providers, customers using those providers, and sneak away their manuals to learn how to code, what is the syntax, what is that. We lived through it. It is like a joke, I know, but uh, we lived through it. Go to any such, it's not relevant to myself, go to any. Uh, IT industry uh, member at my age, they would all do the same because it was not available. Today it is all available. So what is available? This we call it business technology platform, but let's call it the platform game. Platform games here 
And now it has the AI component. It was like this for quite some time, for the last decade. Now AI is part of the platform for any vendor, for SAP's BTB platform. Let me give my example. It is no different than any other vendor. Due to strategy, there are flavors, of course. If you go to my so it's only ChatGPT or friends of ChatGPT. If you go to the BTP of SAP, you have 22 different LLM models ready to be launched on your on demand for you, for your need on the fly. You can immediately compile a comp question. You can immediately fire an LLM model, name it Anthropic, name it Alpha Alpha, name it. Um, chat GPT, name it uh, 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 Gemini, name it whatever the model, uh, name it um, uh, Cohere. We have to know that. Knowing Chat GPT only is important, using is very important, but we have to know where the fight is. Nobody would, nobody can argue any of those 22 models large language models, who will be the winner? The bigger ones tend to be getting bigger and bigger due to sheer size of number crunching and learning and learning, faster learning algorithms. But in the future, what we believe, we should give a platform to our user base. SAP is not investing in a large language model. I will mention where we are investing. Because we segmented ourselves, we are, in, we are investing in the process models. Large process models uh, is the name of the game for us. That's why we are investing heavily to redesign vector databases that could understand not only text, not only video, not only uh, photography or graphics, but also relationship records on a massively scale database. We currently have uh, 400 something, 400,000 of um, tables that are connected to relations over probably um, you know, millions or billions of record types. So in order to run a business on 25 different industries with four or five different flavors, you need to have a massively integrated platform requires it. So long story short, platform game is here, it's available for everybody, we have to make use of it, AI is plugged in there and there are there are, of course, core components. Forget about this ERP. That's probably the uh, acronym BSA, as I say, being created on this planet. As an enterprise, you need to plan your resources. It is yeah, the enterprise resources planning piece. But the core enterprise resources and planning needs to be integrated to internal and external workforce. It's not just your, your workforce. It's internal and external. Nobody is working on an island. It needs to be connected to your business network. Business network is fired by spent activities. So business network, human capital management, and to your customers. This is your procurement network. This is your sales network, in a sense. Both marketing, sales, and service type of components. And every single piece of this equation is designed on the same BTG platform that is fully agnostic of your language that you are coding. You can code in any, any language that is able to call and um, standardize API or, the, or a uh, web service uh, from this uh, uh, connected platform. And then there is an ecosystem of solutions that, that use the same platform to enhance and add additional functionality to the platform. This is where currently this IT landscape <coughs> is all about. We are uh, number two in CRM globally in terms of every year's net new revenue. If I do not compare SAP with companies that are newly established, because 50 years of experience, we measure SAP's presence by resetting the market in the beginning of the year and remeasuring everything by the end of the year. So the numbers that I'm giving you is 12 months rolling. 12 months rolling, number second, number one, number one, uh, for quite some time, number one. So uh, we are either number one or number second in the field of BTP, uh, number three. We are either one, one, 
the one in the in the leader squadron or the third leader in, in the industry. Our overall, as a platform, we call it the business suite because you cannot run your business. This is why I said it was some sort of a constitution. The, the guys founding the company said we will do something that will be totally integrated. If there is a human capital or human resources need as a functionality or as a problem, we would not call it in the yes, we will call it independently. Yes, it would be it can be integrated to non SAP software components, but as a business suite, that will be seen as integration from the off the shelf as an off the shelf product or a functionality. I used to call it off the shelf because since my childhood I was going buying software off the shelf. There is no off the shelf anymore. On demand is the new term. On demand should be integrated. I'm still um, uh, backloading my memories and using them as word. No, it's not off the shelf. On demand, on fly, when it is needed, the, until the time it loses its presence or importance or uh, availability. <coughs> this is where we are. Uh, back to some numbers about Turkey, so that you would be knowing Turkey ecosystem. There are roughly 15,000 SAP consultants. Uh, the smallest partner of SAP had implemented tenfold more projects from my nearest competitor in Turkey. Because experience, it's not the software, it's not the platform, it's not the code, it's not the AI. It is number of trials that you do makes me different. Proud to say, smallest partner of mine had implemented tenfold more projects compared to all implementations of my competitor. And this is not a typical statistics for Planetor. We have been predominantly acting in Turkey since 96 through a distributor. Yes, 2001, the subsidiary started. But 96 to 2001, we predominantly acted like a sole brand owner in Turkey. And uh, currently, uh, out of the top 100, 84% runs on cloud, runs on cloud software components of SAP. Not only use SAP, but use the most relevant subscription-based on-demand components of SAP. And then, uh, yes, we have 250 uh, headcount in Turkey, one of these in Istanbul, one of these in Ankara, but out of this 15,000 critical mass. And out of this 15,000, every single morning, I'm not that proud to say you this statistic, but this is reality, 5,000 of them, one third, boots up their PC like mine here, logs into their customer on the other side of the planet. Concurrently, Turkey runs, Turkey based consultants run projects in China. At this moment, you know, this morning, I'm talking about this morning, in China, in US, in, in Romania, in, in uh, <coughs> Uh, in, in, in Kazakhstan, in, in uh, I'm just trying to recall my uh, calendar in the last maybe two, two weeks time. So uh, fortunately, I'm, uh, it's unfortunate from my perspective because I, I want those brain powers to be rooted into Turkish companies' problems. Uh, but nevertheless, Unilever, uh, nobody would know, but majority of those large customers, consumer product customers running on this part of the planet, half of the systems are configured by Turkish people in the last 25 years as an accumulation. I wouldn't recall the names, I will not give up, call out names because I am recorded, but majority of the uh, consumer food and beverage consumer products, if you go to any uh, retailer and see the multinational brands, majority of them have Turkish consultants' footprint. Uh, if you go to automotive supplier parts production, it is the same thing. The majority of the gigantic brands has, has footprint. Uh, but this will be my opening. <coughs> I will leave the stage to you. <coughs> if you don't mind me, I can talk for hours. So, uh, first question is a difficult one. Uh, now, I will, not to forget, I will just take small notes, but I will fire away your first five questions. Uh, what 
you're referring to is probably the young professionals program that we are. Uh, this is a SAP terminology. Yes, I will talk about good, good, good catch, the young professional program. I will mention about this one. Uh, tomorrow there is a graduation ceremony. On Monday there is another graduation ceremony. We will add another 50 uh, consultants to the, the, the field. Uh, good catch. Uh, another question. This is two. Let's go for the first five so that I can, I can answer them in batches of five. Startup ecosystem. Yeah. Startup ecosystem. Good question. Another one. Uh, some more difficult questions. Come on. It doesn't need to be about SAP. It doesn't need to be about technology. Anything. Feel free to shoot. <laughs> And they were nearly going bankrupt because of the money they paid for that service. And secondly, another company I was working as an auditor, uh, they were adopting SAP, it was one of the beverage companies' biggest ones actually. And uh, yeah, it took several years to make the adoption. And I didn't uh, got the use of, I mean, why did they change that system completely? Because it was actually there, they used, used the system and they moved to SAP. So basically, is it for all companies? Uh, is it for all companies, all sizes yeah. of companies? Um, I, I will put it this way. So I'm repeating it so that for the recording, the voice, uh, and for my understanding and for the recording also. So SAP users are top companies, gigantic companies that could afford gigantic transformations that span over years. Is this true that uh, this is the storyline? Might be the question. Am I correct? Okay. Uh, the, let me say size versus project. Last, first batch, last question. Yes, sir. This time, I think so. Uh, okay, maybe a controversial question. Uh, yes. Do you think that one day AI will take over the uh, uh, SAP consultant? <laughs> um, this was the question that I was asking. Excellent, excellent question. And I think, I think, uh, I hope uh, this. This is why I put the name, how the AI will change the equation. Uh, I would even put it at a further state. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, before the elections, today the elections are done in the US, uh, the, after elections, the second uh, discussed question in IT industry in the US was, would, what would be the first three software or cloud components that would be wiped from the industry. That was a long debate. That was it suddenly skyrocketed due to some members having the gigantic shows and the show time was uh, about to come. Uh, but good, uh, this is the DNA of the presentation that I want to discuss. But good, uh, thank you for helping me out to <laughs> answer this question. Um, Okay, let me start uh, with the e e easy ones. Uh, uh, background and young professional programs are, are a bit connected because it, it, what, how we select in young professional program is an exemplary behavior of how the SAP consulting army grows in a, in a country. First of all, <coughs> uh, uh, for the general audience, uh, top two, uh, I would think, even looking at the top ten uh, undisputed leaders uh, of uh, consulting in Turkey, if I were to name, I would not name them, but everybody has a different top ten for sure, uh, with having being friends with different people, but looking at this top ten, you would have uh, colleagues graduated from oceanography. Oceanography. Nothing to do with neither computer nor, nor science. Yes, science, of course, but not computer science. Or uh, 
Yes, now it is maybe connected, but back 25 years ago, I would argue it was not that connected, physics, mathematics. Still available in the top tennis. Of course, industrial engineering, mechanical engineering in the top tennis. But out of looking at this DNA of those top 10 people in that place, there is only one common denominator. Neither the name of the university, nor the name of the college, nor the degree that they have. They, some have masters, some have doctorate, some have, do not have a graduate degree. Funny enough, some of them do not have, just one of course, but still, I do argue, still a meaningful percent, one in ten. Is their willingness to invest time and effort to learn extraordinary stuff that is not documented anymore? Back then, that was the question. It was not documented. I was part of a laboratory in my university, working over a competitor of SAP in ERP, having full the documentation. But in the top university of Turkey, we didn't have access to the documentation of SAP, for example. So back then, that was the challenge. I don't know this equation will hold true for future. Having said this, I don't speculate that this is the way to be done. No, I don't know. But that was the case up until now. Uh, their depth and breadth of living day and night, how to solve uh, complex problems. Once again, they were reputable, not because they were good consultants. They, were, they are still reputable because they solved very difficult industrial problems. Once they walk into the past company, majority of their syllabus would, would just graduate, thank them, put them on the best part of the boardroom because they solved gigantic business problems of that company. We live through it. There have been times that some companies had major hiccups. I wouldn't call them failures. Uh, or, or learnings from learning experiences, but some of them had some extremely wild professional positive experiences. Uh, and this reflects into our wi wi uh, young professional program selection. Please follow young professional programs keyword. We, we announce whenever there is an open such opportunity, day one our HR systems populate that message to LinkedIn. Once there is an YPP program, immediately the system fires a blog post saying that we are going to open this program, we are going to open this position. And sometimes the people call me, Ur, you are opening this. So I said, no, I don't know whether we are opening or not. It is still a, a, under approval. No, once it is approved, people learn even before myself. Somebody internal learns it from even internet because it is real-time connected. Once we say, yes, it is approved, it is published. It is so instantaneous. And you sometimes learn faster than myself. And we, the, the selection process is done globally. We do not select locally. We do not train locally. The program is governed globally. In China, it's the same program. It is Turkey, same program. It's the same tutor that executes the uh, program. It's the same program. Roughly two to three months, you all not only learn SAP functionality, you need to be a fresh graduate. We do not accept in the young professional program uh, itself, we do not accept people from the professional life because the main idea is to onboard fresh graduates into consulting world of the city. Um, before the graduation, we do uh, like you do in your university, uh, career days, and uh, out of one, I have been doing it since I became the managing director. But then uh, there was other programs, similar ones. Uh, out of one colleague. Uh, due to personal reasons, he, he shifted to another um, uh, environment. They were all, they are all part of uh, companies running SAP systems. So we, they, you tend to get onboarded uh, into those companies even before graduation. It is cost free for the uh, receiving party. It's half, half fully 100% funded by SAP itself. Once again, just due to cost, I do not uh, discount on the uh, resources, uh, because cost of resource flying to here and presenting or, or uh, educating the, the cohort, as we call it, uh, is covered uh, and it is the same uh, standard area. Uh, going to the third question. <coughs> uh, for the uh, startups, depending on the year, 
that that when I receive this question, startup e ecosystem, uh, and I will need to show you something so that it names now into your mind uh, through the system. Uh, this part, this ecosystem solutions, yes, we have gigantic partners, even partners uh, that outweigh our own sheer size. As uh, SAP is 120, but on this planet, probably there's uh, two to three million of developers only, not only working for SAP, but also working for our partners and customers. Uh, those solutions, you have the established ones and you have the emerging ones. Depending on the time of the uh, decay, uh, for example, if I had to answer this question two to five years ago, SAP has an investment capacity called Sapphire Ventures. Sapphire Ventures were the, either the first or the second largest venture capitalists in, 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 uh, in operating in um, Silicon Valley. So we even uh, have investments through this arm. Yes, Sapphire, Sapphire is our largest event name by the way. It is some sort of an affiliation with the company. It's not fully affiliated because we don't want to be seen like SAP startup company. And we have foundries. Uh, I'm also trying to start a foundry in, in, in Istanbul, which we have not succeeded yet, but there are foundries, and those foundries out of COVID are networked globally, and I don't believe there is any sense of creating a foundry. Or a foundry does not a, a, apply or operate locally anyway. But long story short, uh, we significantly invest in startups, and SAP is the only company that acquires a we start the startup relationship, and by the end of the tunnel, we give them our offer. This is, for example, how. Let me give you a real story. This, this. Does anybody recall the name? Uh, 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 what can I give as an example? Um, Com uh, one of those competitors is Palantir, but Palantir was not established like this. In the growth of Palantir, we had seen Palantir was a startup when we started cooperating with them. When they had roughly 30 to 40 headcount, this, I don't know if you know the company, Palantir, for example. Uh, once then, it was a small, small, small scale operations, they were partner of SAP, but th at some point in time they grew so fast and so big that they became another uh, uh, significant vendor in IT industry, a unicorn and decacorn then. Uh, another good example that was more or less a spin of a, of a department in SAP uh, was a competitor of Palantir. Uh, Signario is, was one of them, we acquired them, we started with a partnership, we had done deliveries with them in turn and experiment. At the end of the tunnel, it, it was an acquisition, and it is part of the portfolio. But back to how the world is changing, maybe I should show you this one so that you can, you can at least visualize the importance of the, let me see where it is. <coughs> I mentioned about Signal. Yo, introduced to yeah. SAP. I will just mute it. I will not show you. Uh, I will just show you. Uh, first, let me just tell you what you would, what you need to understand from the video. You can put it back. Uh, uh, as of today, uh, maybe a connection to the next question or the last question. Then I will come to the side also because that's also relevant to the size. AI makes life so easier that a mama papa company can use the most complex software in on planet Earth. That is the statement that I want to prove to you at the end of the game. But going back to the AI question, would AI change our life? Yes, it would. Would AI replace consultants? I am sorry to say, yes, it would. At what percentage? I don't know. But I will show you something that is being replaced as of now. Totally. Some part of consulting. If you had asked this question to me three years ago, or get a, your uh, red beverage or muscles consultants 
five of them in a room, come to my office, analyze my SAP system, analyze my business, and create a forward-looking change management program for myself, looking at my data, analyzing my data, based on facts that are represented in an SAP system, or in any system, at this, at this point, yes, I represent SAP, of course, usually people ask SAP questions to me, or on, on an SAP system. I had to work at least three months to five months with those five people, one from HR, one from procurement, one from manufacturing, one from finance, one from data and analytics. Analyze, slice and dice, measure, benchmark, see where it goes, see where it is today, you, uh, go and learn what's going to be the future-looking company's uh, perspective in the competition landscape tomorrow. Map those initi initiatives that could take them there. Out of those initiatives, map those difficulties with the current current footprint and current reality to do this new reality that they have to, and come up with a problem. That would, in, in, in the minimum, take me five people three months. What I am going to show you they tested this scenario in, uh, I think it was, uh, it was not Deutsche Post, a, a post office, I, we will see the logo momentarily, on the largest postal company using SAP in, in Europe. Uh, and it took them 14 minutes to come up with this report, much better than what I could have done with those five colleagues, including myself, in three months. 14 minutes. What it does, the system that I'm going to show you, the screens and the slice and dice of the data would represent, first, it connects to your SAP system, drags the essence of your problems, understands where your problems are. Is it in procurement? Is it in production? Is it in sales? Is it in um, treasure? Is it in uh, um, investments? And then maps them over KPIs and puts those KPIs in a competitive list compared to your benchmark group in your industry. Because looking at the retailer and looking at the production company wouldn't make sense. So in your industry, suppose you are a chemicals manufacturing company uh, producing paints in Turkey. Then this is segmentation, they bench, be, the system benchmarks you over those high-level KPIs. So those, your competitors are open to market, we can slice and dice their uh, financial results. But, and see where you're red, where you are um, green. And then, in terms of total value attached to this problem, you can, you, if, let's say you want to solve top 10 problems, you have to make sure those problems represent a gigantic improvement value. To, so, importance of a problem should be connected to the value that it brings once it's solved. It can be a very important problem for the employee base, but once solved, might have a small PNL impact. So building up the roadmap from the PNL back to the problem, mapping those problems in the in sense of uh, importance, this is called value engineering. You put the values associated with the problems. The system generates this as KPIs. You will see it's one star, two star, five star problem. So at least you understand that a two star problem is more less important than a three star or four star problem. Maps it. You can sort it with the importance level. It puts the difficulty level. It might be that it brings value, but it is diffi also difficult to solve. But it, it can bring value. So the TCO is how much energy you need to put to get this output. Maybe some other smaller problems could be solved like this, and the value proposition could be a low-hanging fruit, as we call it. So in terms of importance, in terms of timeline, it sorts out. The second, the third column, it says in order to solve this problem, you can use this standard functionality. It's, it knows what SAP is able to do. Knowing your problem, it writes you a subscriptive solution, saying that, oh, this module is not configured right, or you're not using this functionality. Use it and solve it. This medicine kills this pain. Something like this, if you, if you are a doctor. And then, if there is no standard functionality, or there is further improvement points, it says, out of my startup ecosystem, or established partner ecosystem, I have those solutions, plug and play, out of the cloud, plug and enable type of implementation is available, and you can switch on and start using that partner solution 
Talk to my talk to my partner. I don't know how they price the software, but at least I give you a possible list of other vendors in my ecosystem that can solve the problem. Fourth column, there are hundred. Just to give you an idea, there are hundred AGI generative AI functionalities available today in SAP system. You can do two AI generative AI projects in a company, and you cannot uh, complete all the open uh, all the available. Gen AI functionalities in an SAP system as well today, and it will be 200 by the end of Q1 next year. But long story short, it also solves those AI functionalities are able to answer your question. It gives you this one also, and at the end of the tunnel, it says, "Oh, I'm sorry, there is neither in currently available AI functionality nor there is currently an available uh, robotic process automation nor there is a partner." Nor there's a SAP standard functionality, but I can open you a white space and you can use my platform, like my partners or myself coding my own software components, you can code it, and this is where you need to code and solve your problem. So think about that. I mean, from all dimensions, standard functionality, partner functionality, AI usage, robotic process automation, and I'm sorry, I, I couldn't find anything, you can open up a white space and start solving it as if you are in the same way. This is what we are going to see as a report here. And it, will, it took 14 minutes from the first plug, first login, until they get the answer. So then those are the, I need to uh, articulate a bit. There are zillions of recommended actions. Those recommended actions are, some of them are fully automated. You can plug and say, do this customizing for me. Industry popularity and relevance. Relevance for you. And this is relevant, but less important due to sheer size of the total output. The value proposition is low. You can click and rank depending which business line it sales and R&D impacted by this one. Yes, impact is three stars. So you can, you can, the, the, it is not a full report with your solutions, and it is also a RAM solution. So standard capabilities, 42 standard capabilities within the list solves it. It links to standard documentation. Maybe I should, I can just pause it here. Just give me a. It says 43 standard capabilities, 51 intelligent technologies, both robotic process automation and AI functionality. Answers uh, are found. Uh, six automations, workflow type of automations beyond typical robotic process automation for one step, but a stepwise automation spanning standard functionalities are available. And uh, this is the previous version. In the next step, it says uh, my partner solution. So in, in, in 14 minutes, that gigantic company got this documentation in hand. And this is free option. Once again, this is how the world is changing. This was the most expensive consulting service you could imagine. This is for three months, five green barrels coming to my office doing this work was the most precious consulting service ever, if you ask me, that a customer or a user could buy, acquire, and it's not free. And I bet you some of our colleagues are arguing otherwise, but I'm on this side. I'm sincere on my uh, bet. The report would be better than what would have been done by those colleagues of mine. And once again, this is how the world is changing. It is free of charge. We charge for the users. And back to your question, does SAP size for smaller market? Yes. 51% of the user base globally, globally, it is having less than 1,000 employees. In Turkey, the smallest customer of mine, including the um, assistant of the owner, has five employees. We can size down to a mama papa shop, and the largest uh, uh, customer is the largest um, single 
uh, entity on, uh, for Turkey. They also use the same. So in, in, from hundred thousands or, or millions to uh, there are customers who have million employees in, on this planet. We have customers as big as this one. Uh, from million to uh, a few handful is the sizing area. So at this, if you had asked this question to me 15 years ago, I would have given a totally different answer. But as of now, seeing this, feeling this, and back to maybe a comment on the configuration. We used to, as I, I, I was also a consultant, we were coming into an office, asking, what, what, what's your problem? I'm, I'm writing down how we understood the problem. In the first phase, this is how we understood the problem was the first phase. We called it uh, the, the, the as is state. To be state was the second phase. This is how you are, right? Yes, yes, we answer. The second phase was, we want to build a system like this to be in the future. Are we on the same page? Yes, yes, yes. This was another three months effort. So this to be document was configured in the system. First time ever, after three steps, the, 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 the real problem owners was seeing the system real life working in front of them and they were panicking, what kind of a system, open system is I have not told you this. Who told you that? The dialogue was starting. As of today, it's a totally different approach. We, call, we used to call this approach as, as accelerated SAP methodology. Now we call it activate. We do not ask if somebody comes and says, T tell me what you're doing and I could improve it. No, don't tell anything. I should be the one knowing. I have 440,000 use cases or users as a companies on this planet. 1,400 of them are in Turkey. Once again, 440,000 over 50 years I have been doing practice. I should know at least something, right? If, if somebody comes with a blank eye, with a blank piece of paper, that means either he had not or she had not done the homework well, or you should run away from that room. We should come and say, this is this is how we view our business. This is how we did, we, this is how we uh, implemented in your industry. Benchmarking through the system, this is how I see you. You might argue the otherwise. I mean, you might say, okay, this problem is much important than that, whatever. But I have a point of view. We do not start, start from a blank page, and we, you should not allow people to write code in the system. But this system is so open and so powerful. We were probably the only vendor that has the ability to download its code. Once again, all SAP code in SAS for the ERP component or any other component, you can click and download the code. Imagine a software producer giving away it is most precious intellectual property free of charge. Since day one it was like this. 50 years we have been giving it. Why? The difference between downloading a code versus maintaining a code, we tend to argue that we are much faster, much better than any other, uh, uh, I wouldn't call it competitor, any other entity that is able to answer. We, we give this as a credential, so that because you are you're also giving away very important activities to SAP, you should know clearly what's going on. Imagine yourself pressing a button and going down into the code of Excel, trying to understand what in that moment Excel is doing in the memory. In a said, you can do it. In any moment, if you have the right, pushing F1, F4, you will be there. Two, two steps. Two buttons, you are there. In what is the, the, the memory? How does the um, variables look like? What is it reading? Which part of the software component is being? What is the code that it's going to run in the next step? If you push the enter button, it shows you what's the code that it will run. Such a psychopath environment. Somebody who has uh, some <clears throat> passion to know about software development, software lifecycle management, I would argue they should come and visit how SAP code is maintained. Not Java, I'm sorry to say. Not Python, I'm sorry to say. No other modern language, I'm sorry to say. They have no clue what they're working on. 50 years we have been ver making version management over systems of 440,000 customers. There is no such a statistics for any development platform on planet Earth. Once again, I'll be very clear on this. You have to see it by yourself. 
Still, no other platform has such a capability. I would argue, you can challenge me on this, I'm, I, am, I am good. What I'm stating here are my beliefs. They can be challenged. They can be falsified. Maybe they are false. But at least I have a claim. Back to the original question, life is changing. If I have time, I go for a second five batch. If not, we will conclude here, whatever is your preference. In the world that we are going to live, consulting, development, and runtime would concurrently change. Not one will change. Yes, consulting practice will change, but customer demand will change. Because seeing this, the customer would demand. Let me just switch the power off and solve this problem. The demand will be there. People or technology vendors or consultants being able to do it will survive. Not being able to do it, coming up with a roadmap for 12 months. Three years, when I started SAP in 96, the first project on my, my, first, my first project timeline was three years. In, in 2001, there was an argument, anything more than 12 months wouldn't work, was the motto, not only for SAP, for any IT project. And now, I would claim otherwise. Switching on should be the name, the name of the game. Are we there? Technically, yes. But physically, I would argue no, because none of those core components are unfortunately clear. Everybody was trying to solve their problem with the current landscape, and nobody was looking at how the landscape would look like in the next five years. The time they were able to use the software components with full power, first year implementation, six year second year adaption, third year perfection, fourth year you're the master. Once you were mastering, the technology were on a different So we should all know that if you took the root of those four steps, doing, uh, learning, mastering, and perfection steps of a life cycle of any software code, it's not related to you. Any software code runs like this. Don't ask me why. This is the reality as of well today. If you still live like this, once the time comes for perfection, people would be non-started. Fresh starts even could take you over because they are starting from a fresh ground. So leapfrogging, jumping beyond the competition is the name of the game. Please, 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 when you graduate, design systems, design processes, design companies, design go-to-market strategies, design anything that could leapfrog your company. In Turkey, we need to leapfrog. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where I want to end. It is more relevant than, I am sure to say, any part of this planet, other than any part of this planet, is more relevant today in this geography. We need to leapfrog. And whatever, 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 what knowledge is available in any developed market is available today in my house, in front of my uh, high school, uh, kid, seriously, high school kid. I was developing software components since my childhood. I had the luxury of having access to compute power. I was lucky, pure luck. But still, I cannot code as good as I was coding in the age of 15. Once again, I look at my code back then. And it was done only for 32 kilobyte system. 32 kilobyte. It's peanuts today. And I, I, I'm still shocked. Because the, the, the brain had no problems to worry about, no this, no that, pure, pure from concentration, knowing nothing. So we need to leapfrog with this being in that state is sometimes an advantage. We have to capitalize on this advantage to leapfrog our competition. That's my main takeaway. And the time is here. Functionality is there, not only for the safety, for all the vendors out there. What I speak about SAP is also true for other vendors. Don't get me wrong. Thank you for the, the kindness and the patience of listening to me.